What should you do once you've landed your first customer? How are you going to actually move the shipment you've committed to? Well, don't worry. In this video, we'll give you step-by-step -step instructions for handling your first full truckload. I'm Benjamin Kowalski with Freight360, where we provide the latest transportation sales tips and training videos to help you reach your goals faster. If you're new to freight brokerage, you've been making a lot of prospecting calls and doing hours and hours of lead research each week. All of those hours building rapport and getting rejected come down to this, moving your first full truckload shipment. So first off, if you've made it this far, congratulations. You're now starting to see the fruits of your labor. But what do you do now? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Let's dig in. Step one, procuring the load tender from your shipper. A load tender is a shipping document that has all of the details related to the shipment. It will have your customer name, pickup and delivery addresses, appointments or first come first serve details. Also the details of what you'll be shipping. For example, the weight of the shipment, the pallets, the dimensions, the commodity, and finally, the rate they will pay you for this shipment. There are some details that aren't always on a load tender. For instance, the types of equipment that can be used for it. A flatbed shipment may also be able to use to ship on a step deck or a Conestoga often. And oftentimes, you'll be able to book a reefer for possibly a dry van load. And this is important because the more options you have to load, the easier it will be for you to find a truck because you'll, have, you'll be able to access a larger portion of the available trucks in that city. So make sure you get in the habit of asking your customer before accepting a load tender. Also, be sure to ask if there are any specific securing requirements that aren't on the load tender. For instance, tarps, chains, coil racks, maybe a reefer chute, e-tracks, etc. Okay, now that we have the load tender, what do we do next? Step two, build the load in your TMS or transportation management system. This step will be different for everyone depending on the TMS you've chosen, but what they all have in common are the fields you'll be completing. A simple way to make sure you have completed everything that you need to enter is to review the load tender you receive from your customer. Every detail that the shipper provided you needs to go into that system. Now that you've got the load details in your TMS, make sure you also upload the original tender into your TMS. It will make invoicing much easier later. Step three, post your load. If you have a carrier that you've already built a relationship with, you know, this is an easy one. You've already got them. But if you don't, which is much more likely for your first few shipments, you'll need to post this load up to DAT. For a step-by-step -step breakdown, check out our video we put up last week, how to post a load to DAT, an easy tutorial. Step four, choosing the carrier for this load. When fielding calls from your DAT posting, you'll want to vet the MCs, the motor carrier numbers of the carriers calling you to determine if they are the carrier that you actually want to use. You'll be looking for double brokering red flags, out of service percentages to determine how reliable they actually are. You also want to know the age of the MC to make sure they've been in business more than a few days. Most established brokerages will usually only work with an MC that is older than one year. But if you are a new brokerage, you probably don't have that ability. So again, just checking to make sure they're not brand new, didn't start business last week. Once you've determined that you can work with this carrier, make sure that you also request a certificate of insurance declaration page. That's just a one page document from the carrier that has all of the insurance details and amounts and verifies the dates of the policy. Which brings us to step five, booking the carrier on the load. After you've vetted the MC and negotiated the rate you'll pay them, you need to get their information into your TMS. If it's your first shipment with this carrier, you'll probably need to add the entire carrier to your TMS at first. So make sure they've completed your company's carrier packet. My Carrier Packets is a great product. Um, we're not endorsed by them, but it does streamline this. I've used it often. I've got a lot of other clients that use it. It's a pretty reasonable cost. Once that's completed, you'll ask the truck and trailer number. You'll ask for the make and model from the dispatcher. You'll need the driver's name, 
You'll need the driver's phone number and their email. You'll also need the dispatcher name, phone number, and email. And finally, you always want to confirm again the time and dates and the type of equipment that will be used. Which brings us to step number six, dispatching the rate con to your carrier. Again, this will vary from TMS to TMS, but they're all doing essentially the same things. They're creating a document similar to what you received from your customer. The only difference is there will be a different rate and a different customer name on it. You don't want your carrier to be able to contact your customer directly. Now, this is typically a violation of most carrier agreements anyway, but you still want a CYA, right? Now, before dispatching the driver, ask again for a location and verify that they are empty and rolling after their previous shipment, right? Now it's safe to send the Raycon with the full details and the addresses. Ideally, they're only gonna be a few hundred miles out, but in some cases they might be much farther away. So it is very important to also log that first location into your TMS. Now they are officially on your load and working for your brokerage. So you should be documenting their locations all the way until they reach the original shipper where they're gonna be picking up for you. Step seven, after they've confirmed they've reached the shipper and have begun to start loading, make sure to ask the driver to have the BOL signed on site with their check-in and check-out times. This can be used later to verify if any detention actually occurred. Once the driver has confirmed they are loaded and rolling, you'll begin step number eight. Check calling the carrier once or twice a day, depending on how often your customer wants an update. Some high priority shipments will require 24 seven updates with GPS. You can look into some services like Text Locate or Macro Point that do this kind of in the background for you. But if you don't have them, don't worry about it. There's nothing wrong with making a few phone calls a day to get a location and update from your driver. Quick pro tip, don't just get the, the location of the driver. Have a little bit of a back and forth with them. Ask them how it's going. Ask them how their day is going, how they are on hours, right? That little bit of back and forth makes it a lot easier to build good relationships with your carriers. Now we've got step nine, verifying with your carrier once the load has completed that there were no issues, no damage to any of the cargo, which is often referred to as a clean bill of lading. So ask the driver to send you a screenshot with their phone of the signed BOL to upload into your TMS. Which brings us to step 10, making sure you receive an invoice from your carrier later that week or next week, and making sure you actually invoice your customer for this load. Those are more back office tasks, but you know if you're running your own brokerage and you're new to this, they're all gonna be under your umbrella. And that's a wrap, congratulations. You've now officially completed your first full truckload shipment. For more tips and training, be sure to watch our weekly podcast on our channel and check out the description for links to group and private coaching. Because remember, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right.